Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and today's lecture is part two of the JavaScript form validation. And this is really the last part, just going to take you through some other pieces to go into form validation. First, I'll demonstrate the form. If I try to submit the form with nothing in there, it says I have to enter something for name. So I'll enter my name. Okay. If I submit again, it tells me I have to enter a value for date. I'm now going to enter a value for the date, and I'm going to pick a date in the future. So I'm going to pick... Uh, Christmas Day 2020, hopefully you're watching this before 2020, and it says the date that entered as that is after today because it says the day before today, so now I'll enter 2000 and it will submit, and the way that the submit is designed, it just pops up a um, email and it's going to send the stuff off via email, it's not going to post it to the server, but that's just to demonstrate how this whole thing works. Now, let's go back and see how all that occurs in the code. So now we're going to pull the code over here. First thing we're going to come down here, down to here is the form itself. Um, so I have this form. It's got the name input form. And I have an on submit. That is an event. Return validate form. Now for the on submit to work, you also have to have down here an input type submit. So that when that triggers the on submit, it's going to call the function validate form. The method here is post. And the action is going to be um, equal to sending it to a mail to. Now, if the function validate form returns a false, it will not perform the action. If the function validate form returns a true, it will. I also have two inputs, uh, one type text, which is the name, and the other one type date, which has a placeholder that just simply shows, uh, lets the user see what type of information needs to be entered there, and it says input day before today. So the real guts of this go down to the function validate form and I had been working with some students that had some still had some questions of how all this worked so I'm going to kind of go one step backwards um, even a little bit further into the depth of how this whole thing works well basically here what you're seeing is that a function of a JavaScript function is going to be called and that JavaScript function is validate form so let's go up here to validate form now validate form is going to need to either return a true or a false and it's going to do it by calling other functions that's crucial and you must need to know how you're going to have to know how to write functions and how to make those returns actually work so first thing i do is i set a variable called fname equal to what the user entered into the form and i can access that through the document variable document.forms forms is kind of like an array okay it's string indexed where i can get the form name and the input name and it pulls back the value. So in other words, what the user inputs now is going to be f name. And now I'm going to pass that to a function. The function that I'm going to call is validate not blank. So let's go down here and look at that. Validate not blank does one thing. It validates whether the variable passed to it is blank or not. So you pass it a value and a message. The value is equal to a null, and that's a double equal or the value is equal to a blank string, okay, it's going to get into here and it's going to say must enter a value for, and the message is just to let the user know what field needs to be entered. And it will return a false. If it's not, if it's not one of these conditions here, it's going to return a true. So let's go back up here and see how that works. So this exclamation point is not. So it says if not validate not blank, okay, then return a false. Okay, that's saying, okay, if the user did not enter something, return a false. Okay, so that's the first one. That validates the not blank conditions. Now we've got also we do the same thing with the validate not blank with the birthday. And the purpose of this is to be able to use the function over and over again with different pieces of information. And that's why you write functions. I see a lot of students try to put everything into one function. Okay. Right now, if it works, you're going to get away with it. Future, no. You need to write and learn to write good code. Okay, you've got to be able to do this. And good code means breaking things up into small functional pieces that each do something. It's not hard to do, and you should be able to do this. So let's look at validate not blank again. Note that it's got two possibilities coming back, a false or a true. Okay, And if it returns a true, Okay, it's just going to move on to the next line. Now I have another one here, if not validate date. 
Let's go down here and look at validate date. First thing I do is the same thing that I did in the other one. Okay, in this case, I actually get the value from the document.forms value and I set it into a variable D. But the variable D is going to be a string because the user actually inputs a string, not a date. It's just a string in the format of a date. So I need to convert it to an actual date. And the reason is, is I need to compare it against today's date. So variable D underscore as underscore date, that's a variable, is now going to be equal to date dot parse D. There's more than one way to do this, but this is one way. And parsing is a conversion to a specific data type. So date.parseD will take the string D, which is a string, and convert it to a variable of type date. Then I make another variable called today, which is equal to a new date. New date is a, is a special way of instantiating or making a date. And it will always come back with a date that is the date and time that you actually instantiated the date. This is called a constructor, and you do need to know that, okay? To create an object by using the new operator is called a constructor. And this is one type of constructor, and actually, there's multiple constructors for the date. We're not going to go into those now, but, they, but there are multiples. So, when you create an object, you can create an object using a constructor. You can convert a variable of one type to a date, by using the parse. Now we can compare D as date to today, which is also a date. They're both comparable to each other. And if the D as date is greater than today, I return back the date entered is after today, and I return a false. If you come back up to the code where we said this, if not validate date, return a false. So in other words, if this did not validate, it returns a false, otherwise it moves on to the next line, and after you've checked all the different conditions, you can then return a true. So essentially, the logic here is very straightforward. You check the different conditions that you need to check with separate functions, and if all the functions do pass, it's finally going to return a true, and it's going to allow you to submit the form. And that is the logic. Very important at this stage of the game. Most of the people that should be, have been using this should have been through programming classes, and you do have to have the ability to program, understand what objects are, write functions, and use this stuff. So this is really important. If you need help, I'm going to be creating more and more videos for helping out. This is more of a beginner's video, but it's a good video to start learning some of the things that you have to know. Thank you very much, and good programming.